Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have Jelly Bean with us. Say hi, Jelly Bean. Hi. Sorry, that's not a good dog voice. Um. So last week we did a major book unhaul. Two parter. I will link them right up here somewhere. Um, but after you get rid of a bunch of books, what do you gotta do? Buy more books. So you have to buy more books. Or at least I do. Uh, so I traded my books for store credit at the bookstore and got more books. So... Let's talk about some books. I have 30 books here, so I don't know how in-depth I'm going to talk about them. For all I know, I might just pick it up, tell you the title and the author. See, he's already bored. He's yawning at me. Uh, but I'll tell you the title and the author and maybe the genre. I don't know. I might go into detail. I don't want this video to be super long though, so let's just jump right in. So these three are probably going to be pretty surprising. Oh, and before I start, I should say that this is going to be a two-part haul as well. There's the books. I haven't read which we will be talking about right now in this video and part two are books that I've read and loved or that I bought when I hadn't read them and I've already read them because you know read them in one day or something but now let's start so these three are historical fiction what? Girl, I don't read historical fictions. I know. But I had to get these. So the first two kind of share a theme. And uh, that's why I had to get both of them. All the things we cannot... La 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 la. All the light we cannot see by Anthony Doerr. Or The Boy and The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boone. And uh, these are both war stories taking place in during World War II, I believe. Um, this one is about Bruno, a nine-year-old kid who finds a fence in his hometown in Germany. And he ends up finding another boy who's being held captive in this concentration camp. And he goes and talks to this boy every single day. And he brings him food and they become best friends. Even though they're on opposite sides of the fence and enemy lines. And the movie was so impactful. The was so good it made me cry hoping for the same with the book uh, this one I really don't know anything about other than it's a war movie but it was hyped on booktube a while back so okay that's right so it's about this girl Marie Laurel Marie Laura something like that Marie Bohr lives with her father in Paris, where he, near the Museum of Natural History, where he works. And then she goes blind. So he builds her a miniature town and a miniature museum for her so she can feel it and uh, get like she can read it without you know with being blind 
I don't know how to say that. I have words. Um, but then they have to move because of the war. And she goes to live at her aunt's house. And since she's blind, she can't really see anything. And she doesn't know what's going on. And she doesn't have her miniature of the town. And she can't really get around anymore. Um, uh, and while at her aunt's house, she meets, a uh, Hitler youth, who is trained to kill, I believe. And this is kind of the story, he doesn't want to kill people. And she needs a friend. So, I don't know. I'm... Sorry if that's completely wrong. I just know it's about Hitler age. Uh, just like this one, they're both war kind of stories. Then, um, this next one is The Help by Catherine Stockett. And this is about a uh, woman Avlian Avian I think it's Avlian but I feel like I'm mispronouncing that she is a black maid in 1962 Jackson Mississippi raising her 17th white child wow she's always taken orders quietly but lately, lately it leaves her with a bitter sweetness, a bitterness she can no longer bite back. Her friend Minnie has certainly never held her tongue or held on to a job for very long, but now she's working for a newcomer with secrets that leave her speechless. Ooh. So uh, this one kind of goes along with a lot of stuff that's going on in the world today and it's very sad that it is the year 2020 and that we are still dealing with racism to the front how heavily we are right now and it's like one pandemic just ended or hasn't even ended in some places and now we have to fight for black lives matter you know like yeah of course black lives matter it's just i don't understand all the hate in the world and so when I saw this, I knew that I had to pick it up and that I have to read it. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But I just don't understand what's going on in the world right now. Like, it's so crazy to me. I mean, so what your black, brown, white, green, purple red we all bleed the same color if we were you know if we cut right here it's gonna bleed red we're all human beings and it's just i just don't understand how we got here and it's so i, I just don't even know what to say like what can you really say it's crazy world that we live in and I don't know something needs to change guys something really needs to change I'm sorry I I'm back uh but it's just crazy like I saw the video like I know a lot of people did of the police officer killing George 
and I was horrified. Like, oh, I will never understand as a white female what you are going through as a black female male what whoever I will never understand but I stand with you so let me just put that out there okay let's get back to the book haul um so the next category of books I got a lot of them uh one of my goals for 2020 was to read more uh, classics, and I've been doing pretty good with that. Uh, but see, when I read them, I only give them like two to four stars. Usually it's about three stars, and they're not like bad, except for a few, you know, and they're not like really good. And I would really like to be the type that loves classic. It has yet to happen, but I feel that if I'm going to love a classic, it's going to be one of these. Hopefully. So, the first one, I will just show you the penguin classics. I got two penguin classics. And let me tell you, I don't usually know a lot about uh, the classics that I get. I just know that they're classics, and everyone says you're supposed to read classics, you know? So I'm giving it a big shot this year. The first one is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And... This one, I don't know anything about, except for that it's about an orphan named Pip, whose life changes after an encounter with an escaped convict, but that's it. Uh, sounds interesting, intriguing enough to pick it up. Then, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, and this one, uh, I don't know a lot about either, except for that there's a snowstorm, and these people are stuck inside a place called Wuthering Heights. Yeah. I don't know what happens, though. Then I got Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and everyone knows about Frankenstein. You know, I know the basic story, but I've never read it, so I thought I should put this one under my belt, so to speak. Uh, then I have... The Alchemist by Paolo Polo, and I have no idea what this is about, other than it is a journey that takes place in Spain, and I'm not even sure if that's true. Uh, but people have talked about it, people say it's really good. Uh, my husband recommended this book to me. Uh, he said that he used to like it when he was a kid, but he hasn't read in years. Uh, to Kill a Mar Bleh. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And I literally know zero about it. I think it's like takes place in the 60s. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, I didn't do my homework. Then there is uh, Flowers in the Attic 
by V.C. Andrews. And uh, this one is about orphans who go to live with their aunt and then they find uh, magic or secrets in the attic. Uh, yeah. Then there's Brave New World, which is probably in second place of which classics I'm super excited for. Uh, this one is like a utopia, but since utopia doesn't really exist, it's actually the first ever dystopian, and I love dystopians, so I want to see what started it all. But it's Brave New World by Alec Aldox Huxley? Aldox? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. And then the last one, which is the one that I'm most excited for, is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This will be the third book I've read by her, and the third book that I've read this year by her. Uh, just, this is about, okay, honestly, the synopsis reminds me a little bit of, uh, And Then They Fell, or They All Fall Down by Alice Feeney, I believe. Uh, I hated that book, though. It was so slow, uh, it just, it did nothing for me. But the synopsis sounded really good. So I'm thinking Agatha Christie did the synopsis first. And I'm hoping she did it better because I haven't read a book by her that I haven't liked. Granted, I've only read two books by her, but, mm, you know. Uh, anyway, this is about, like, eight people that go to an island and they're invited to this mansion. And they go and then slowly one by one people start dying and it's like a mystery of who is behind it and who's gonna survive the night and oh my gosh so good okay and then this one has some that are surprising that I bought and others that are not as surprising um but this is my dis not my dystopian there are dystopians in this but this is my sci-fi picks i know who am i getting sci-fis and classics and historical fiction what who have i become uh but let's start with Jumper by Stephen Gold. Uh, this is a movie that I have seen. And uh, it's just about this kid named David. Well, not really teen. Like, kid. Like a teen or a young adult. Uh, who realizes that he has magical powers. That he can jump anywhere he wants to around the world. And that would be, like, the best power, in my opinion. Because you can go see anyone anytime you want. You can go on vacation whenever you want. Uh, you don't have to pay for plane tickets. You could go see all the touristy stuff and still be in time. Still be back home in time for dinner. And, I don't know, I just feel like that would be the ultimate power. Uh, but he learns that having this power comes with consequences. So I want to know what those consequences are. All right. And then this one was surprising to me as well. The Martian by Andy Weir. So I've heard really good things about this on BookTube. Which I need to learn my lesson because just because 
people on booktube like it doesn't mean I'm going to, but it's about this Martian who gets left behind, uh, his space, his crew basically leave him in space, and this is his survival without his crew there, I think, something like that. Then, these three all have something in common. They're kind of like dystopians. Well, this one, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, is a post-apocalyptic story that follows a father and a son. And I've only seen that in the TV show The Walking Dead for a brief time, but it was also like a huge cast of characters. Um, this one I think is just the father-son. And I'm really interested to see what happens. Then there's Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I'm actually already started reading this one, so I was going to include it in the already read section, but technically it's not all the way finished. It's only like 30 pages in. But I'm really enjoying it so far. It's okay, so the year is like 2045. These are people's stacks. So that's someone's house, that's someone's house, that's someone's house, that's someone's, that's someone, you know? So that's weird. Uh, but it's about this video game designer, kind of. Not really. Well, this guy created the Oasis in his in a virtual reality setting where life takes place in virtual reality setting anyway because, well, that's how the future looks. And um, when the creator died, he left uh, clues to get to the end of the oasis for whoever finds it all the keys and all the clues will inherit the oasis along with his like millions of dollars or however much he's worth and uh it's really interesting so far there's a lot of 80s pop, pop culture um some of it I get, some of it I think I'm a little bit too young for, and I don't quite understand, but most of it, it's very easy to read. Most of it I can understand, and I wasn't around in the 80s. But this is on my June TBR, if I, well, I've already read some of it, but Okay, side note, so starting the month of June, I was supposed to read for the Make Your Myth Taker Readathon, and I'm failing miserably. I'm reading, and I'm reading a decent amount, but for that readathon, you were supposed to read in the order that you put your TBR, and I'm not good at that. I have to have the freedom to pick what I want. Even if it's limited choices, that's why Bookopoly is good for me because I have usually about five to well books that I have to read, but I can read them in any order I want. This one, I was supposed to read it in a certain order. It didn't work for me. So I'm trying to read the same books, just in a different order. But we'll see. Um, I've kind of strayed a little bit. Uh, but we'll see. Okay? We'll see. Alright. And the last sci-fi. It was partially inspired by picking this one up. And that is War Cross by Marie Lu. And, uh... It says, Player, Hunter, Hacker, Pong. Alright. Uh, 
Let's see, where were we? We were at War, War Cross. Oh, and there's a new addition. This is Bella. She just had to join Mommy, which is a okay, right? Yeah, oh, good girl. Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> but uh, Warcross is another video game, virtual reality, dystopian type world. So, I got this one, liked it, or at least what I read of it, you know, and picked this one up because I have no self-control. All right. And then, the, uh, this one is not going to be a surprise. Well, the fact that there's only one book in this section shouldn't be a surprise. But I bought one romance book. I know, I don't do romance usually either. But this one, I might like. So, this is Something Borrowed by Emily Giffen. Uh, this... Hold on, let's see. There we go. Something Borrowed. So this is a movie that I have yet again seen. I know. I suck. Uh, but I thought the movie was good. It was slow at parts, but I hope the book isn't as slow. But I definitely enjoyed the movie. So I had to get the book and compare them, you know, because that's what we do. And then, I think I said I was going to end on YA Contemporary, but I think I'm actually going to end on Thriller. It's going to go this section, which is middle grade, uh, YA Contemporaries, and then thrillers. You know. Hey, there she is. Ooh, pretty girl. Okay, but my middle grades, there's four of them. This one is, a, this one was a Newbery winner. Award winner in 1993, which is the year I was born. It is Somewhere in the Darkness by Walter Dean Myers. And it says, A Father, a Son, and Two Strangers. Hmm. Okay, so Somewhere in the Darkness is about Jimmy meeting Crab. And Crab is his dad, but Jimmy doesn't know that, and so that's interesting. Now I understand a father, a son, two strangers. Makes so much sense. And then another... Okay, so I've read three Roland Dolls this year. Because they're such fun, cute reads, easy reads, you know? And so, I had to buy two more. Uh, the first one was James and the Giant Peach, which everyone knows James and the Giant Peach, the story, but I just want to read it for myself. Another one is The Witches. Which I've heard is scary, but I've also heard it's cute. Uh, but being in middle grade, I'm not sure how scary it's going to be. I'm kind of hoping it's not scary. Uh, when I want to be scared, I read some of my thrillers. Because I love my thrillers, but I'm hoping that The Witches isn't scary. And the last one... The last middle grade was a John Bellairs mystery featuring Louis Barnevelt, the house with the clock in its walls. This is a movie that I've never seen. 
Go me! Finally a movie version that I didn't watch. Um, but it quite literally is a house with a clock in its walls, I think. I don't know, I think it's about like a haunted house or a clock, or a ha house clock, or I mean a clock house. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But, hey, it's going to be, it's either going to be really good and I'm going to love it, and then I'm going to go watch the movie and be happy that I read the book first, or it's just going to be an average middle grade, you know? Yeah. Okay, and our second to last section is uh, YA Contemporary. So, they both share a very common theme, or, well, a common theme in my books, not a common theme in general. Um, I was gonna hold them both up, but let's see if I can do this, because I'm trying to hold her up, too. So, the first one is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher, and the second one is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizen. Uh, so uh, the common theme that they have, the thing that they have in common is that they're both about suicide. Um, sorry Bella. So this one is about Hannah who uh, takes her own life and then she leaves cassette tapes for the people that she says drove her to it and the TV series adaptation of it is great but I've heard that the book isn't as good that it's just about blaming all these different people for her death which the TV series was a little bit but it did it in a, I don't know how to explain it, it did it in a better way than just, oh, you did this, and that's why I did it, why I killed myself, as opposed to the book, which is like, you did this, so I killed myself, or at least that's what I'm told, and so I'm not sure about it, but other than it's kind of a funny story being about a teenager who thinks about committing suicide, uh, I have no idea what this, you know, nothing else. I don't know. And then we're on our last stack of, I kind of mushed thriller, horror, mystery, um, all that kind of stuff in the same boat so that I can just go through the rest of my books really quick. Alright guys, so this should come at no shock that these are my mystery thriller whores. Yes. The best genres at last. I'm sorry, she was having a staring contest with me, but this first one is, uh, I only have one more Stephen King novel plus this one, so two more Stephen King novels, and I haven't been liking anything I've been reading by him just not my style, not my cup of tea, but, uh, so, so, not but, so, so, I am going to read this book, oh, you guys can already see the title, and the other book, which is Rose Matter, and if I don't love either of them, then I think I'm going to stop trying to force Stephen King on myself. I understand why a lot of people love his work, 
and I'm not saying that I don't like it. There's just, it's just not my favorite, not my cup of tea. Uh, but this is The Green Mile by Stephen King. And it's about a convict named John who is on death row and he's getting ready for the electric chair when uh, I don't know convicted killers when one of the officers Okay, when one of the officers kind of meets him and kind of grows to be friends with him, I think that's what's about, I, I don't know a whole lot, obviously. I've never seen the movie either. Gosh, I'm not doing very good. Although, I think that not seeing a movie before you've read it is good, but at the same time, a lot of the time I watch a movie that I don't really realize is a uh, book, and then I read the book. So, I don't know. I do both. Leave in the comments below if you read the book first and watch the movie, or if you watch the movie then read the book, or if you don't care. I'm one of those, I don't care. If it, the movie looks good, I'll watch the movie first. But if it's been a book for a long time that I've really been wanting to read, and then it becomes a movie, I read the book first. I don't know. Anyways, let's get back to these books, because this is an extremely long video. Extremely long video. So, Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. Uh, I really don't know a lot about this. I know it's about the new girl, Casey, who, Casey, Cassie, who, uh, makes friends easily at her new school. And then they all go out without her and she wonders why. But she can't ask her best, her new best friend, Bailey, because Bailey never comes back from her night out and honestly the main reason that I picked this up was again booktube you know books and la la she read this and liked it I believe yeah it was books and la la it was Kayla from books and la la she loved it so I had to pick it up you know I'm so sorry Oh my gosh, so I threw my book on my bed because uh, I can't quite reach the pile anymore and I accidentally hit my dog, but he's okay. It just scared him because he was sleeping. Oh, I'm a bad dog mom. Okay, then there is Let Me In by John Adjive Lindvist. Uh, this is another another movie that I haven't seen though. Uh, I think it's about two teenagers finding a body, and the guy, the boy teenager, thinks that uh. Revenge has finally come to the bullies that picked on him. And that's all that I know. That's all I had to know. Okay. Then we'll be at my top three books in this haul after this one. So this is The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. And uh, this follows... Okay a bunch of kids used to draw chalk outlines on their friends 
porch or like house or driveway to kind of send messages and it's kind of a cute way of communicating with your friends. I think back in the 80s, I don't know, something like that. But uh, I don't know, I, I would do that today if I had a friend close enough to just go chalk up their driveway and it wasn't 110 degrees like it is today. Actually, it's 117 today. Wow. Uh, anyway, let's get back. So, they, you know, have that cute little form of communication. And then 20 years later, I think, I don't know, it might not say, like 20, 30 years later, uh, when they're all grown up, they start receiving these uh, chalk messages again. And it, you know, at first it's funny. They're like, oh, yeah, that's obviously my friend pranking me. That's weird because, you know, we haven't used that form of communication in a long time. And uh, then people start dying. And they realize that it's the person, the same person that is leaving them messages is also killing people. The chalk man. So that sounds uh, interesting. Kind of on the fence about it, to be honest. But it's by CJ Tudor, and he's been very. Uh, I'm sorry. She. I did not know. She has been very uh, talked about on booktube. And so I had to give one of her books a shot. I sincerely apologize. I really didn't know. Alright, and then these three are my final three books from this haul. Besides the ones that I've read, which will be in a different video. But these are my five star predictions of this haul. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say these are going to be five star predictions. Oh yeah, I believe it. So the first one is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Both Books in La La and Healing in Bookland. No. Both Books and La La and Gabby Reads love this book, I think. Uh, so it's about a family that goes on vacation. They There are no houses around them. And then this very tall man starts kind of wa approaching their house. Wow, when the little girl is outside playing and she kind of starts talking to him as he's approaching the house and she thinks he's really nice and then he kind of warns her and he says I'm very sorry we have to do this uh your dad's not going to want to let us in, but he has to. You have to save, you have to save the world. So, uh, I don't know what that's all about, but that sounds epic. It almost sounds like the purge starting. That sounds great. I know. I'm sadistic. It's okay. And then... This one I've heard good things and bad things about. Kind of like 13 Reasons Why. But There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Uh, so, this, I, you know, it's a creepy setting. A uh, heart pounding page turner. Uh,. It says it's a slasher genre, which is great because my prediction 
is that it's going to be a cheesy slasher flick, but in movie form. Like, I Know What You Did Last Summer, or The Scream. I love those movies. They are some of my guilty pleasures, because they're so cheesy, for one. But they're so entertaining. And that's what I'm hoping I get from this book. A cheesy, entertaining slasher film. Like a teen slash movie. In book form. That's what I'm expecting. And the last book on my list that I definitely see being a five star is Five Girl. I'm not Five Girls. Final Girls by Riley Sagar. Uh, I have read one other Riley Sager book. It was, uh, Log Every Door. So good. Loved it. Brilliant. One of my five star reads of the year. Maybe going to make it on my best of the year. Spoiler alert. Uh, Final Girls was his first nom novel, I believe. I don't know for sure. But it's basically taking the premise of the Final Girls of scary slasher flicks. You know? Like, the Final Girl of every movie ever. There's always that one person that survives. And this is about basically putting them all together and then starting to kill them to see if any of them will be the final girl of the final girls or if they're all going to die. That sounds great. I don't know about you, but that sounds amazing. So these are my top three that I got, but I'm very excited for them all. I'm sorry this was such a long video, but in the middle there, I I had to talk about my Black Lives Matter rant. Um, it's true. I, I'm an ally. So, I just, I don't understand the hate. I don't understand why what the world has come to between police officers versus the black community i it makes my skin crawl even just talking about it because we shouldn't be there you know in 2020 we should be past this we should okay i'm i'm really i i can't talk about it anymore um but I hope you enjoyed my book haul sorry that it got kind of emotional in there a couple times um but give this video a like and subscribe to me you'll see a lot of puppies this one's Bella she decided to come up here today Usually Jelly Bean likes to sit on my lap when I film, and sometimes Wyatt will hang out with us. Uh, but I have three puppies who also want you to give this a thumbs up. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I wanted to end it on like a really quotable quote or something to end with but I don't really have anything I just just don't understand the world anymore it's just craziness guys but I'll see you in the next one